welcome everyone it's your boy jersey boy here in live we got madden 20 going uh, we're looking to get our first franchise um, slash dynasty mode started uh, i want to preference that because i feel like the dynasty part is going to be the most important piece here so with that said we're not looking to just get to the super bowl or to just say that we lifted the lombardi trophy we want to essentially and i hate to say it because i can't stand the patriots but we want to be a dynasty in the mold of teams like them the packers steelers where we're saying for the last decade you know we've been to this bowl or we've been that team that others need to overcome so that's what we'll be looking to do here with that said let's go ahead and get into what we're getting started so we are going to be going with the new franchise um Generally with Madden games, I'm usually already playing a few games kind of getting used to the new mechanics and all that kind of stuff uh, We're gonna switch it up here, especially since with the content I'll be delivering starting off It's going to be uh, more of a sim mode for us uh, with our dynasty build Only because I don't have all the equipment and everything anymore uh, in order to give you guys the gameplay as well I got to use the share factory here. So I'm just making the best of what I got with that said though we'll kind of walk through uh for our introduction video here uh all the things i'll be looking at kind of our expectations moving into the season you know philosophies all that good stuff so i always love starting off with the preseason roster just because i want to see who we might be able to identify as key people moving forward for us select the team you want to join all right so if you didn't know by the gamer tag if you haven't noticed by the channel which i'll be having a lot more updates to that as well uh, i'm going with the jets here right so we have a very interesting team we've been defensive heavy for like the last decade and a half um, we've had a few decent offenses within that time span as well but for the most part it's been live and die by our defense and uh we've just been really expecting the quarterback to essentially not cause um, too many turnovers, too many issues where, you know, they're trying to take over the game. We essentially just relegated them to a game manager role. So we'll be looking to completely change that entire philosophy um, so we can match what the rest of the league is doing, right? You take a look at the Chiefs, you take a look at teams like the Steelers, uh, the Rams. They, they've had exciting offenses and they've had a defense to essentially either match or can at least help support it. So we can see here with our top three talents we have Le'Veon Bell my favorite uh, probably one of my top Jets since the days of watching Curtis Martin and Darrell Revis Jamal Adams and then we have the newly acquired CJ Mosley but we'll get into that when we get into that start your season with recommended settings if you wish to change roles or adjust options use the tiles on the left okay so let's take a look at our menu here we have our league settings which, by the way, um, as far as sliders and all that kind of stuff goes, just to let you guys know, um, and I have the links in the description for uh, that information as well, I'll be using Matt 10's um, game slider uh, that he set up for Madden 20, and I'll be using T-Dog's XP sliders uh, for this. So I'll go ahead and make sure that's posted in there. Uh, as for our settings here, uh, Madden Sim, Perfect League, Instant Starter, doesn't really matter trade deadline cool enable superstar abilities I want to keep on I've heard um I've heard various opinions on this fact um, but kind of like I was doing my research uh, when I was deciding which sliders and stuff I want to roll with um, this is supposed to be a very important part of the game uh, I don't really want to take away from that by taking it off so I am going to keep that on I am going to turn off the pre-existing injuries though so that I can determine what I want to do with my roster. Also turn off practice squ squad stilling uh, as we really develop this championship team, this dynasty. Um, we're going to have too much depth, hopefully, which will be a good thing, which means our practice squad is going to be filled with players that can probably start or hold you know, a, a second team position on another squad. Uh, and I don't want them really poaching. So that's what we'll do there. 
Um, no career clock scenarios will trigger for your league. Um, I'm going to keep this on for now and kind of see what that's like. Uh, if it ends up being something I'm not really feeling or, you know, depending on what you guys give me for feedback, we'll turn that off. Okay, won't matter because we'll be essentially simming. This is new, so the minimum size roster. Okay, so I, I think we'll keep this at, at the default that they had for 46. Okay, so Madden's definitely trying to give us a much more realistic uh, idea of kind of game day experience. You know, normal rosters, we have, uh, I believe it's 52 or 53 people that they can have, but it's actually only 46 on game day, I believe, that's actually playing. In-season player movement limits. Okay, we'll stick with unlimited here. Player overall cut restrictions. We'll keep that. We'll keep all of these as is. Okay, so quarter length, um, just kind of defaulting into uh, the sliders we were talking about again a little bit. We're going to do 13 minute quarters with uh, a 15 second runoff, which kind of as seen, um, it seems like it gives us a good amount of plays while not taking forever for the game to actually complete. So, especially since we're doing sim, maybe I can do two. Um, at a time instead of running through breakdowns every single game um, just kind of depending on what we have going on and then all this stuff won't really matter because I'll be taking full control over a lot of that stuff all right so unfortunately my guy Adam Gase we're going to be taking over as the new coach I like to think of myself as a strategist in a lot of aspects of my life uh, so this is exactly what we're going to be rolling with. Let's get this skin tone to uh, our chocolate brothers. All right. So I think I want to roll with something along the lines of this. I want them to be kind of muscular. And then face wise, we need a face of a coach, but not somebody that's, you know, coming out of a horror movie. I think we'll roll with this. We'll roll with that. And our coach is about business, but he's comfortable in himself, so he'll have some relaxed type gear on. Uh, I love wearing sweatpants, so thinking uh, this will probably be a nice touch for us. Yeah, I think we're going to roll with the uh, hoodie sweatpant attire. Now, here's what we'll do. Um, it's a little early in Revis's post career life for us to roll with him. Uh, and as much as Joe Namath has kind of made the franchise what it is, I think somebody that really encompasses everything that we love about the New York Jets is Curtis Martin. So that's who I'm going to roll with for our new coach. Let's just say he's been doing some behind the scenes learning uh, throughout the course of the last few decades, uh, learning some proper coaching techniques from some greats. And now he's willing to take the opportunity to see if he can't go ahead and do the same thing that Pete Carroll has done for the Seahawks. And, you know, Reed has done for the Chiefs and go ahead and help us out with getting a. Uh, getting us a Lombardi trophy sorry about that multitasking you know how it is all right so we got Curtis Martin here we have our offensive playbooks we are going to keep them exactly the same uh, even though of course he's not our coach um, he has some of the philosophies that we'll be looking for in his playbook so we will stick to that and we'll be looking to make the most of it by building out our roster all right, our starting point. We're going to be going with the preseason, and let's go ahead and get to it. All right, guys, so I'm assuming this is one of the first things they were talking about um, when it came to the career clock thing. We have a, a player development thing here. Um, I'm going to do a lot of that stuff off screen, but I'll definitely be calling out whatever I, I 
found out and picked up that was interesting from stuff like that training i'm going to do off screen everything i really just kind of want to focus on the breakdown of the games player development things we're looking out for scouting um all that good stuff because with sim uh building type um series like these it's not going to be a whole lot of super super interesting stuff is really going to come down to of course the person running the channel and the the content that's being delivered so we'll focus on that let's go ahead and take a look at this lineup though all right and actually i want to go ahead and just jump into our depth chart for this makes it a little bit easier to kind of run through our breakdown here all right so we have sam darnold young quarterback going into season two season three in real life of course we had trevor simeon Tr simeon behind him with david webb right not a lot of uh not a lot of solid depth for one and even with our starting quarterback he's young we're still waiting to see what we have in him it's nothing to really write home about um just taking a look though uh at the general stats we have here for him so far he has pretty decent acceleration so we know he can throw on the run and all those kind of things right and you know if a play breaks down he has some giddy up to him he can get on decent awareness for him being a young quarterback which is good uh, which is throwing power is slightly better i actually believe in 19 it was at an 89 or a 90 so somehow he took a hit there uh what we noticed though is he does have decent really well decent to really good short throw accuracy i would love to see that up a few more points medium accuracy not so great but his deep throw accuracy is something we can work with his throw on a run also gives us uh, a lot of leeway with however we end up calling the plays and stuff like that and he has a manageable throw under pressure right things we could build up keep in mind he's moving into his second season so He can get away a little bit and he can run some play action now the thing that's caused me stress even in Madden 19 was his carrying it's remained pretty low um, although he did clean that up uh, over you know the last two seasons or so so we'll see what's happening there everything else is not really gonna matter but obviously he's going to be who we try to take advantage of while we still have him on his rookie contract and we'll be looking to try to build and develop around him as quickly as possible with that said i'll wait till we double back to kind of team building philosophy with that in mind now running back stable really good Le'Veon bell balao Powell's has always been super underrated to me uh, i wish we gave more of an opportunity back in the days when we had you know lt and sean green in the stables we have ty montgomery rounding out the pack and then elijah mcguire um, we have some interesting players back here, like Trenton Cannon, um, just from like a speed perspective and things of that nature that, you know, we might want to kind of stash away and see if we can develop that over the course of time. We don't really have a fullback anymore, so it looks like Ty Montgomery. Uh, of course, we can use Trayvon Wesco kind of in that role um, as a hybrid. The receiving game is where things get a little tricky for us, right? So... We kind of took a look at the stats. We know the short game is where Sam Darnold should be thriving at for us. And then he has some ability to manipulate the deep ball. But basically, it's going to be short throws and play action. So we don't really have a whole lot of super, super strong, skilled receivers um, that sync up with what he can do. As you can see, Quincy Nunwa, Crowder, kind of our top. And, of course, Anderson, um, candidates there for helping him out in that manner. Now awareness is kind of important for the overall but i've always liked it because i felt like when the plays break down for the play action this is those higher awareness receivers is where you see them kind of reacting to whatever the quarterback might be doing slightly better um, but with that said robbie anderson definitely a strong deep threat right he can get off the line decently against any kind of um cornerback for the most part quincy Anunwa, kind of a, a tight end wide receiver a hybrid kind of player we used him in various situations so uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of changes I feel like we might be able to make this season to our receiving core to give Darnold the best chance for development. Um, depending on what we want to do moving forward with this season with building the team or, you know, developing certain players might also play a huge factor on who we keep, uh, who we search for, um, who we cut and all that good stuff. In the tight end game, Chris Herndon, 
developed supremely well for us from his rookie season to his second season, right? Um, took a little bit of a hit with injuries lately, but outside of him, we don't have anybody super, super talented as a backup, so that might be something else to look for. Um, just a decent number two tight end to kind of help support either strongly with blocking or at least being able to help kind of run like a one-two punch for us. All right, our line. We don't really have to say a whole lot about it. We know it's been tragic. It's been tragic for a long time, right? Um, our new GM has done a fantastic job managing the line actually over the course of just one small season. I'm going to say one, even though he's been with us technically for two, because he's only officially had one real off season with us. So we don't really have anything here to write about. Even Calicio Simile, he has, you know, injury history. Things haven't really worked out well for him with us. Center kind of trash. So regardless of whatever happens here, I'm taking the same approach. We absolutely have to make sure that he's protected or we can at least have a decent run game. We have to do something well. The offense won't develop if we can't get anything going. Otherwise, the defense is going to be eaten regardless if we get killed or not because they're going to be out there a thousand plays a game. Now, our defensive line historically has been our bread and butter for the most part. Leonard Williams kind of leading the way there. I like Nathan Shepard as a backup and even Fatu Kasi just a little bit. Um, but he's going to be looking to kind of take point for us. Uh, we generally run a 3-4, which I've loved actually since Rex Ryan had came through back in the day. Um, Todd Bowles essentially kind of ran the same thing. A few different schematics, different player types that he liked. Um, so I'm kind of in the same vein there with him. Henry Anderson, though, we got the veteran on the other side to kind of help keep everybody level-headed on the line. Um, not a whole lot of backup behind him, but that's A-OK. -okay. We're going to deep dive into, you know, how we might be able to make the most of the situation that we have. Quinnen Williams, though, the young rookie, manning the middle of our line here. Um, and he actually grays out just slightly better than Steve McClendon, the veteran there, showing everybody the ropes, uh, including Anderson. So... From a depth perspective, it's not looking great, but we with that 3-4, uh, it works out in your favor to where you can really manipulate a lot of those pieces. So you don't have a pure defensive tackle, but you have players that can essentially fill that role due to the frame. So body types and all that stuff are going to be super important for me, uh, especially when we get into the scouting and stuff like that, because you want the players to match the scheme that you want to run, right? I can grab any 260-pound defensive tackle that might be able to penetrate, but can he do the run stuffing and things that we need? Now, linebacking core has always been kind of underwhelming for us. Jordan Jenkins, yes, we've had improving over the course of uh, three seasons now, um, doing the best that he can. He's improved on his stats and things like that, but he's not a game wrecker, right? Everybody wants a game wrecker on the edge. We're no different. I do like Frankie Louvu. Uh, potentially as somebody although he doesn't really meet uh, that that body size that we need out there so he might even be potentially better shifting over to the right side uh, since he is a little bit better at finesse moves and that's kind of our speed rushing position the middle of the line is where we should be able to hold down the fort though CJ Mosley coming over from the Ravens and we've had Avery Williamson holding down the fort for us uh, for a season or two now so if anything here, just a little bit more backup, maybe potentially um, seeing what happens on the trade block for, you know, Williamson on the right side. We don't really have much of anything, though. Ja'Kai Polite didn't pan out for us in real life. We'll see what happens here. Maybe Brandon Copeland, ah, nothing to really write home about, right? So we have some work to do in terms of potentially looking for talent out here as well. Now, the cornerback position is something that uh, I'm really concerned with. Tremaine Johnson telling you now he's going to go. I didn't even like the signing when we first brought him over prior to ever seeing him play a game. Um, I just knew that he worked well with the Ram scheme and kind of what they had working over there. Things didn't work out because of cap. Boo -hoo. Um, but I'll definitely be looking to move him. Uh, I've been working on developing Nickerson actually uh, as a slot receiver for me uh, in Madden 19. That's worked out pretty well with what I was doing. Uh, I like Brian Poole as well. He can definitely end up man in the slot. We can put Nickerson on the outside potentially as a two, depending on how he develops. And then we have Bless on Austin. In real life, ended up doing really well for himself. We'll see what we can potentially do with him here. Free safety, of course, we have the dynamic duo. We have Marcus May here. And then we got Jamal Adams, my boy, my dog, the alpha 
So we have a good one at the free safety and strong safety positions, and then it's more about the depth here that's going to cause problems. We have Middleton, who could potentially do a little bit of both for us on the other side, um, but then we only have Ryan and Brian here. Now, he did do well in college, from what I understand. Um, looked into him just a little bit here. His stats don't scream out the best uh, for what he could potentially do for us, but we'll see how things play out in preseason over the course of the season with who we keep cut and who we bring in. Chandler Cantazaro will make it work. Um, he does have the kicking power that we're looking for and all that good stuff. Um, can't really say too much about the kick and punting game. At, once their contracts run up, I'll be looking to kind of bring in my own person, depending on uh, what I see out there in the scouting community. But neither here nor there. Kick return game. We'll be seeing what I want to do here. Um, I don't really like to have anybody that's starting for me necessarily. Uh, being uh, our main returners uh, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do just to make it work so we'll see what happens there um, it looks like he's the best person to run uh, on both sides Le'Veon Bell of course should be the third round back uh, excuse me third round he should be our third down back um, with that said though we'll be looking to increase the carriers for Montgomery and Powell a lot more than what happened over the actual course of the season for us. <coughs> Definitely underutilized our, our halfback depth. Don't want to make that same mistake here. Power back wise, I think I'm going to switch it up and this is where we can give him a real, real break. Somebody that can get those clutch yardage for us and things like that. I think that will be where I push Powell up potentially. Um, but we'll see what happens after, you know, a few preseason games. Slot receiver wise, definitely going to be Jamison Crowder. He's potentially, outside of Anderson, our number one receiver anyways. So, eh, we got to kind of make the most of what we got going on. Uh, we could also potentially, even though Quincy and I was technically the two right now, make him uh, think back to like the Chicago Bears days, the Monsters of the Midway, just make him an oversized uh, large slot receiver for us as well. Uh, but that's really kind of Jamison Crowder's role, his bread and butter. Um, we'll see how much damage he can do there. I'm not really worried about these rush positions. Sub linebacking, though, uh, definitely something super critical for us. So, of course, we have our, our two middle linebackers going down the fourth there. It looks like we actually have Neville Hewitt um, as another one. Might swap him out for Blake Cashman, um, see what we have in the young rookie there uh, for a couple snaps here and there. And then slot cornerback. So, as I mentioned, Brian Poole definitely the go-to. Potentially we'll be looking at Nickerson as well. Um, not really ecstatic about the, the starting or general depth of our cornerback position. So also something to severely take a look at throughout the preseason to see what we can come up on. So overall, talking about team building philosophy, right? So with us running a 3-4, we're generally going to want bigger bodies up front. We're going to want kind of more athletic, but 250 to 270 pound people, uh, potentially maybe 240 uh, on the linebacking side. Left side, people strong enough to be able to, you know, set the run um, and, you know, dominate with power to get to the quarterback on the right side. They're going to be dealing with some finesse. So that's where we have some leeway to work. Um, and I'm thinking kind of like a Thomas Davis mold, Shaq Thompson maybe, um, but we'll see. Now, with the quarterback, uh, we talked about needing to take a look at some things there. Uh, I'll leave that be for who I potentially see as targets in the next video. As for our offensive line, um, you can talk to a bunch of different people. We know the trenches are super important. Uh, some people think cornerback might be more important, you know, starting back to front. Talking about offense in the line, I like to go inside out specifically. I think finding that center uh, is the, the best idea for moving your line since they work most closely with the quarterback and then you try to find your pieces like your blindside protector and, you know, whatever other pieces you feel like you need to. Um, and I'm more so about the run game on the inside, the pass game on the outside, uh, even though the edges is where you could potentially break off the big runs. I feel like you can kind of get away uh, with serviceable running uh, from your two tackles, your bookends there. So... It's all just going to depend on what we can find, right? Um, I'm giving myself basically until the time we need to give Sam Darnold uh, an extension or we need to really start looking for another quarterback to build all those pieces around him. So 
you know, we don't really need to focus on finding a quarterback now, maybe a depth piece, somebody that can back him up uh, if he tends to get injured or something of that nature. But everything right now is about supporting him as best as possible. So um, I'm going to be taking a look at who I want to put on a trade block and stuff. I know it's a cliche, but I really do plan on putting a lot of these pieces that I already know for a fact I'm not going to keep around as like Tremaine Johnson, as I mentioned, uh, to see what we can get back. It's not about bringing in my own players or anything like that. It's about what we had right now already didn't work. So I'm going to identify who we're keeping at each position moving forward as, you know, our icons. We have Sam Darnold at the quarterback spot, Le'Veon Bell for now at the running back position. Um, right receiver, I don't know. Offensive line doesn't matter, right? You know, we had Jamal Adams at the safety position. So we'll be looking to see who we're going to build around for this team. We need them young enough to where those pieces, by the time we bring them in that third year, can just be support pieces. Um, but we need them experienced enough by the time that happens to where they can really help Sam Darnold get us to the playoffs, get us to that Super Bowl game. So with that said, uh, I think I'm going to call this first initial video a wrap. What I'm going to go ahead and do behind the scenes is go ahead and get the sliders and all that good stuff set up and in place, um, kind of run through some of this stuff. Um, let me know what you guys think for now. Uh, I will be running through the first preseason game and having that played and simmed out and all that. And I will go ahead and uh, probably play the entire preseason maybe. Um, and I'll keep track of the stats and all that good stuff. We can break it down each game. We can break it down two at a time or I could just run through the full preseason for the next game. And I'll let you guys see how things have developed for us over the end. But I appreciate you guys joining the channel, checking out the video. If you lasted this long, look forward to a lot better, more interesting, uh, definitely superior content coming from this position on, especially once I can get that equipment back and all that good stuff. Uh, but I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. It's been your boy, Jersey Boy. Please like, subscribe, tell your friends. Uh, we're going to be getting this channel booming moving forward. Peace.